So here on Reef Beef, we have modeled this podcast after the conversations that we have at trade shows at the bar, which is sometimes in an irreverent fashion. And we have fun with this just laid back conversation that we have about aquarium stuff. So if you're into that, then we are here for you and we are glad to receive you. Today, we're going to talk about flatworm exit, we're going to talk about money in the hobby, and we're going to talk about trident calibration fluids and a few other things more than likely. This show is brought to you by saltwateraquarium.com, Champion Lighting and Supply, and Polyp Lab. Now to Reef Beef. Richard, what's going on, my man? Not much, man. How are you? Doing good. It's good. What's, I'm going, what's that? You go ahead. What's all going over there on your neck of the woods? I'm wearing this hat backwards because I was watching some um, some YouTube videos. Um, uh, and it, it turns out that uh, uh, every conspiracy theory douchebag wears their hat backwards on their uh. show. So I thought I'd get more more credibility if I wore a shirt with a hole in it, apparently, and this backwards hat. You you look like you're at a Limp Biscuit concert. Uh, I did it all for the nookie. Limp Biscuit. Wow, how on the fence are we about Limp Biscuit, right? Oh man. Uh that Fred. was wait, that they had the guitarist Wes, right? Who wore the black sclera. That was badass. Yeah. In the Fred Durst. Well, Fred Durst. Yeah, I don't know. That could go either way. I don't know. It's like it's just like the whole hat to the back thing. Oh, absolute. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, let me straighten that out. There you go. It's a nice hat though. And I could see I could see uh Limp Biscuit people now in their midlife being susceptible to I don't know why. I just feel like they could be like, yeah, man, it's the chemtrails. Oh my God. I I I joined this uh saltwater aquarium for beginners group. Oh, why, dude? Uh well, I I, I I'm trying to understand. I got in this I I I think it's because I convinced myself that I and we could make a difference in the hobby. Right. Thanks. We get, I, and I thought, shit, man, I won an award and it's the new world. It's the internet and, you know, people learn and we move forward and wow, we're going to, but I don't think it's true anymore because of you mostly. Um, well, because you said that one time you, you brought up, you were like, I want to talk about, why people don't value me quarantining or conditioning fish for them. And it's like, uh, oh God, we've been doing that for 40 years. Yeah. All of these, this, nothing's ever getting better, which is not true. It's getting better incrementally, small, small steps, right? And so I joined a few groups because I want to understand what's going on. Uh, but today they were posting about garlic and ick and- uh, uh. And I posted a uh, uh, article about it, and then I was getting flack back. And uh, it turns out the person I'm talking to, their tank is two months old, and and it's just like, oh my god, wait, why are you? You didn't even read the article I posted, and you you gave one fish ginger and lucked out. Uh, why are why are you talking? What what do you what do you? But but that's what that's what new hobbyists do. I I guess I'm not completely surprised but you're saying like right now like within a week you saw someone talking about how ginger helps parasites on fish more than one person specifically about ick and it was this fucking morning it's like the more things change the more they stay the same well it's that's like, that go go ahead sorry no i was just saying it's like a tray you writing on falcor and the never ending story it's in it's insane i mean i don't want to i'm not trying to sound elitist but just that's like low hanging fruit information that just won't go away and then people new in the hobby just latch onto it and and i, I mean i don't know how you do and this is not just aquariums this is everything in the world like just this persistent low level bullshit information that won't die yeah and so for me, that's why that's why I'm loving the podcast that we do. And I'm loving the Discord. 
it's just enough traffic. It's uh, and the people are pre vetted at least. In, you know, mostly I'm in the member side um, because because people are paying to talk to me, so that's where I'm hanging out most of the time. Um, and I'm super appreciate it. Although you know, so so it, it's like kind of this like haven of not crazy talk. Um, but I you know I don't know what to do about it. There's but I, I and I've always liked to help I because I, that's what I did for a long time. I like to help new people, but I like to help new people in person, really. I don't like to do it on the internet because for, it's, a, it's just a lot of things like being face to face with someone, uh, being taken seriously. Um, you know, on my time, just like anyone else's time is precious, and I do this all day long. So if I were to go online and help people, like I would like to be taken seriously when I'm doing it. When I get bit and someone doesn't take me seriously, I'm like, why am I doing this? I should be playing with my kid or something like that. Right. And I, I'm going, well, you know, the Reef Beef members, they're the ones I should be giving my attention to. Yeah. You know, I shouldn't be, first of all, I like them <laughs> and they're pre vetted and we kind of know them. Right. And um, so, so that's, I, I'd rather be spending my time in a community that I know it makes sense than trying to help randos. Right. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, because because I'm learning, I can't help randos. None of them. This is sounds weird. None of them know who I am. Like this woman, clearly that I was talking to. Who didn't read the article, she didn't put two and two together. She didn't see the the, author. the article has your freaking name on it. Yeah. Uh, but but they also don't care who I am. And that's fine. You know, yeah. um, but it's 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 just so the Wild West that it's not even. You know, they don't even know yet what to ask. Yeah. I, like they don't, there's, there's no semblance of the thought that I should say, what does your tank look like before I take advice from you? You know this what I mean? It's, uh, uh, so I think it's interesting and it's helping me understand that, you know, whatever Messiah complex I have, uh, <laughs> it's not it's not a thing. So forget it. So I'm trying to forget it. So that's this sort of, that's why I go. It's interesting. It's just yeah. fascinating to watch people, but I do the same thing on the kite forms now too. Uh -huh. It's like, Oh God, it's all the same. It's all the same. And, and so why am I surprised that our hobby is like this? When our, our like hobby, I, I don't know how to quantify, but I know, I just feel like I know this. I, I just know this. The the turnover rate is brutal. It's got to be because it's a it's a rather expensive hobby that's not super simple. And I feel like I don't know how most people get into it. Maybe going into a store, seeing something on social media and then finding their way into a store, maybe getting talked into something. And I'm a product of stores for 10 years. So I know um, not like I did this, but some stores seem to like Oh yeah, salt water is not that hard. It's not that expensive. They want they need you to buy something. Like if you were to be totally honest, how would you even be a store? Like, oh, it's sort of expensive and it's pretty difficult and you want to pull your hair out. Wait, wait, sir, where are you going? You know. So the turnover rate and that's why the same questions come up over and over again cuz the turnover rate's brutal. We get new crop all the time. Right, and there's also no centralized body. So it's, it is the wild west. It's whatever may, information you happen to come across, it all sounds credible and that's what you go with. And, and that's what I thought the internet was going to fix. And, you know, God. I, you know, I'm trying to think, you know, should, should I make, or we make, or should we spread out and help other people make, you know, shorter videos about, about reef things or, you know, should we make shorter videos about reef things, you know, or should I write a book or, you know, should I, should we bring the, uh, should we do audio versions of all my old articles? And then you and I can talk about what, what oh, has dude. changed in those articles, right? These are great ideas. Hey, listener, watcher, put down in the comments. Um, I, I like this. I like all those concepts you just laid out. Um, I really like the short video thing because right. that's just a fact of the matter what people do. So I'm trying to figure out though, does it make a difference? You know, if you did a short video on wet skimming, another short video on wet skimming, but you know, 
what is that? Where does that go? The short video then do do people goes into a short video pile and maybe somebody, you know, it's it's how what are we doing? First of all, that's the most fun. Either it's got to be fun or it's got to make money or it's got to feel like it's helpful, which is really the first one, right? Um, I feel like first off, it's got to be fun because if it's not fun, we're not going to do it. Well, right, right. Or it's got to make money because we'll do it for enough money, right? Yeah. Um, but fun, fun and helpful. So, so if we spend, if I spend three hours making a five minute video on, you know, my auto feeder, is it fun? Maybe. Is it helpful for people? Maybe. It. I, I'm just not sure. I'm trying to figure out where our time is best spent in this kind of public relations part of the hobby. So, like you say, if if you uh, people uh, listening have ideas, and the and again, this is rich being stupid, you know, going off on some bigger, you know, a, a meta hobby kind of thing rather than. Yeah, because I know what the answer is. The answer is you and I should keep recording shows. And when we feel excited, we should make other videos about other stuff, you know, or, you know, we should hire, I need to hire a camera person to come in and film a bunch of stuff while I'm doing it because I, I don't do it on my own. I uh, also feel like we shouldn't, I think I, I'm just being honest. I think you feel this more than me. We shouldn't feel absolutely so too much angst about when we see the hobby being shitty right um because we see it be shitty all the time and then Good we point. we feel like we want to jump in there and like hi i'm ben let's go this direction but i mean that's that's really pretentious and it's like you know like i'm or you or we are the savior of the hobby i mean we only have so much reach you know, right. and, and it's all for the fact that we just want the hobby to be better and new people to know quicker. Right. And I watch other people doing the same kind of thing. So it's not it's not that I have all the information and I'm a genius, which which I am <laughs> and do. Um, other people do it, too. And they're getting splatted at this. You know, it's so it's 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 coming to the conclusion that, you know, no, you can't help unless you're invited in. And even if you're invited in, you may not be able to help then. So stop paying attention too much to all of that. I think it's interesting. Uh, and uh, and make more shows, which is why we're here early on a Sunday morning making a show. Because we, we, we've had this conversation not in public. <laughs> we, could, we could also ask beefers to, if, you know, because we can't, you know, we, we just spread the message out there that, hey, when you see someone on a forum, a newbie forum talking about, you know, garlic and parasites, just sort of like it's like picking up litter. If you see it, just like throw out the good word. Is that weird? I don't know, because I don't know if I think if I buy the picking up litter thing anymore. Oh, well, just let it let's just turn into idiocracy. It depends on where we are. It depends on where I am. Yeah, I suppose so. I I sort of have that in me. I'll go pick up litter if I see it. Yeah, litter litter is an easier one. I'm in California with the water, and we've talked about the water before, you know, and the recycling and all that. And and I'm kind of I'm kind of bummed about all the effort that I've put into stuff that is clearly bullshit that shouldn't be bullshit. But wait, what that is is you open doors for people and being nice. Open a door for there you go. And a couple people walked through the door and didn't say thank you. And I feel like you're just burned. You got to keep picking up trash, Richard. Well, you got to you got to do it. I got to keep picking up trash for me. Yeah, that's it. Not for other people. The story that's been pushed down our throats. One of the American dream stories is we're all in this together and do it for other people. Oh, and, COVID shot holes in that. And right. So do it for you. I'm glad you pick up litter. I pick up litter when I see it for me. You know what I don't do? I don't put the fucking shopping cart back. Okay. Um, but I can talk about that for, for days. It's got Jim nothing, Welsh. <laughs> we got nothing to do with uh this got nothing to do with reef keeping. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm gonna start that again. Yeah, I'm gonna start that again. Saltwateraquarium.com. And here's the crazy thing. 
is, you know, if you figure like, okay, that's great. That's cool. Sounds like a cool place. You're always talking about it, but how the hell would you get there? And it's in the name. It's just in the name, saltwateraquarium.com. What? Saltwateraquarium.com. What do you mean? Saltwateraquarium.com is how you get to saltwateraquarium.com. So I get in my car and I put in the GPS, saltwateraquarium.com. You know, I bet you could do that. And it would lead you to the three different locations in the continental United States that they ship out from. Wow. But that wouldn't really do you any good. Why? Because you can't just drive to a URL. Oh. Their URL is saltwateraquarium.com. It's not a destination, people. Come on. Oh, I was so... I. Thank you, Ben. I've been so confused for so long. You're a literalist. I'm a literalist. <laughs> what do you do? You it looks like you have something from Saltwater Aquarium. I, I, uh, I don't. Uh, I unpacked it. It's all in the other room. It only just looked like it. But yes. listen, we yes. love saltwateraquarium.com. They've been with us for so long. I think they were with us before we even had a show. They've just always been with us. Yeah. So check and, them out. They got all kinds of saltwater aquarium products that you might want or need. Where do you check them out again, Ben? Oh, man, we're going to do that one again. Saltwateraquarium.com. No, I'm going to start that again. Yeah, I'm going to start that again. So, Richard, I had something happen to me, which I, I'm always really honest about this when I do these things, because this is the reality of reef keeping. This is the reality of owning a maintenance company, of just being involved in this hobby is uh so what happened is i i've had i don't know i've had no i'm telling you what happened I, I, I keep, red I planaria it. red planaria flatworms yeah i i hate them now well i hate the beige ones too but here i don't know if everywhere but here in texas like the red flatworms can show up a lot i'm just assuming that's all over the place that's well mostly in texas because you guys are dirty dirty bitches dirty red rusty planaria um but it, it, the red planaria they don't they don't by by living they don't really hurt the aquarium but they multiply and multiply and they cover up so much stuff and, and it's just annoying then the scary part to that is i don't know the details of this but you know it's always been said that they do have some sort of toxic thing inside of them so when you kill them um especially if it's a lot of them it can cause problems in an aquarium um, yeah. I don't know the validity of that, but I've done this so many times that it, it seems that that would be true. Now, there's a, another type that's like beige and a little bigger and really more so lays on corals. And I hate those too, because I, I believe those types actually like, I believe that they eat mucus off of corals. Again, I'm not sure completely on that one too, but some species do, some species don't. So I have this four foot tall, 500 gallon aquarium out there. And I had noticed a little peppering of red planaria and in the beige planaria sitting on corals. I had a lot of LPS in that tank, you know, mostly euphilia over the course of several months, just start kicking off here and there, here and there. And the client is like, why are these corals dying? It's like, you know, and I noticed the beige ones and, uh, you know, so I sort of threw that at them. And I talked to him about getting a, you know, trying a ras like a, um, like a melanurus ras that's sometimes known to eat flatworms, but also didn't want, uh, you know, that melanurus to cause any problems besides eating the flatworms. So last time I was there about a week ago, I just went ahead and did the flatworm exit. Now here is, here is probably why, even though I did critically think about it and still decided to do it. The, the the tricky thing about using salifert flatworm exit or any sort of thing that kills flatworms is it's the flatworms you don't see that you haven't accounted for that can be a problem. Because what you don't want to do is kill a ton of flatworms at one time. You'd ra It's like Richard and I always say, you'd rather address this when you see a few and it's a light dusting versus you put flatworm exit on there and all of a sudden you notice that there's a million, billion, jillion flatworms pouring out of the reef because of that toxin that's inside their body can cause problems. And it did cause problems to this tank. Richard, you, you, you got anything to say on that so far? 
I'm just uh, I'm I'm waiting to find out where we're going with this. Well, so and this is tricky to keep it evergreen. I'm not going to say which one, but I'm going to say uh, there was a holiday that coincided with this, and I get a phone call saying that the fish are acting weird. Some of them swimming sideways. Corals are closed after you dosed. Yeah, about two days, about a day to two days after I dosed it. Now, when I dosed it, you know, I've I've done this more than a couple dozen times with flatworm exit. So you dose it. When you start seeing them kick off, then you put in a bunch of fresh carbon, maybe things like polyfilter. You you do about a at least a quarter water change. So I did all this. I did all this, but the problem is that when I did dose it, I was like, Jiminy Christmas. That's a lot. It was just pouring red planaria out. And I was like, that's a lot more than I thought that was in there. And so I knew that they were like in the rock work and places where I didn't even see them. And, uh, you know, so the client, you know, on this holiday was like, hey, sorry to interrupt your holiday, but it sort of looks like the tank is just like going down. And man, I bit the bullet because when you do this for a living, I was just like, look, when dinner is over, like I'll drive out there and change water because this is a huge client. Don't want to well, lose that, it. That's the job. And, and uh, I've been meaning to mention this. Um, sorry to derail no, no. your story. No, that no. Um, people don't understand about your job, um, and it was like the juggling job. When when you dis when you take a weird job, you are agreeing to do yeah. weird stuff. Yeah. And one of the weird things is you're probably working some holidays. Yeah, I used to work all holidays as a juggler, but as a maintenance person with an account and you're self-employed, right? If if a client calls you any time and says my tank is in trouble, you go because and, that's the gig. And this client pays me, you know, not you should you should get up and go for any client, but this is one of my bigger clients. And just I mean, if you endeavor to do this for a living, just think if you said, Well, I'll see it in a couple of days and hopefully it's okay. Do you think you're gonna get fired from that? You will. So it was one of those things where I was like, man, after dinner. Um, let me know what it looks like. I'll be out there. I'll do a giant water change. And I didn't receive a reply from him for for a day. And and so I was like, okay, well, the ball's in his court. But he got back to me the next day and he was like, oh, I, I would never ask you to do that. And he's like, but the tank looks better now. And one of the fish he was about to lose that was swimming weird was a copper banded. And, and that was frustrating for me too, because it's very difficult for me to get a hold of a healthy copper band. And it was just like, uh, and then so I waited one more day and I reached out to him. I was like, hey, what's the tank doing? And and again, it's that communication. He was like, hey, thanks for checking in. He's like, it looks like it's going back to normal. But for me, man, I dodged a massive bullet on this. And, you know, from from uh, having to go out and, and uh, in this client's almost an hour away from me, you know, and do this stuff, this work on a holiday. And my family's like, where are you going? How long, yeah. uh, how long before the holiday did you treat with flatworm exit? That was probably stupid. I know where you're getting at. <laughs> that, that's a mini version of I'm going on vacation sort of situation. Yes. Oh my God. There are so many things that I, I should make the list that I don't do depending on when it is, you know, I will never update my apex on a Friday. Huh. You know, you update it on a Monday yeah. morning or Tuesday morning, actually, in case something goes wrong, then you have all this time, right? Tuesday, because Monday, people are still busy with whatever they're dealing with on the weekend. So yeah, and um, any any kind of medication, I want to make sure I'm available three days afterwards to be able to follow up if needed. So yeah, that's that go ahead. That's embarrassing, too, because you bring that up. And that's, you know, that's just I, it's embarrassing, but it, it just sort of dawned on me too. It's like, don't do anything. God, if I would have just waited, like it right. would just be a non-issue. Then you would have zipped out there, you know, on Wednesday and done a water change. Well, I see him, I see him weekly. So it's, uh, it's only a couple of days away from now yeah. that I do. So, but man dodged a massive bullet. So even, you, you know, I guess the question would be, do I find, uh, you know, flatworm exit, a good chemical, but it's like, again, only, only use it 
if you are quite certain that you don't see very many flatworms at all and use it as quickly as possible. If you, if you have a massive flatworm problem, you can't do that. You, you have to siphon out maybe over the course of, of a, several times in a week, siphon out as many as you can. You have to knock the number down. And that's why I say that things like flatworm exit it is very dicey chemical to use. Well, that's what the, the instructions tell you to do that. Yeah. And a lot of people go, it can't make a difference. Um, because sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. We don't know why. Um the so other yeah. thing I'm scared of is like, I wonder in some way, like uh uh, you know, did I shorten the lifespan of some of these fish? Like, what does it do? Does it do kidney damage, liver damage? I don't know. I'm not sure. And I've never seen I've never seen flatworm exit do anything for the bigger flatworms. It pissed them off. Yeah, but, but they, I, they laugh I don't at think it. They were dead. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I guess it comes back to you know the takeaway for all this stuff is, what is the takeaway? The the takeaway is that everything you do to your tank might have repercussions, and so plan as best as you can for what those may be, and give yourself time and preparation to deal with them if they happen. This is so tricky, man. I've got to stamp this into my head. And you would you would think as a professional that this was <laughs> stamped, but it's tricky. I, if I am going to say, man, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put X in this tank. Is there an upcoming holiday? Is there uh, anything within the next few days that would be difficult if that that should be the number one bullet point right before you use something like that. <laughs> yeah, I won't ship stuff on on a Friday. Um, I like it to arrive. I don't even want to ship stuff on Thursday. I want stuff to arrive on Thursday, not on Friday, because if something happens, it's stuck over the weekend, right? Wholesalers so, tell you that too. Yeah, I don't like shipping animals across the country. Anybody shipping a live animal on Thanksgiving or you know, the week before Christmas <coughs> is playing with fire, man. really taking a risk. Um, yeah. And I guess I, I'm torn between, you know, how do you know any of this stuff? Back to our discussion about beginners. It's like, well, there's no way you know any of this until you know it. So, you know, I, I, even if even if we sat down, we wrote a book and said, this is what we think you should do. You know, it's not who who's gonna who's gonna actually pay attention i don't know i don't know i don't know i i we live in a world with magic rocks and a real phd person who grows you know copepods which apparently makes them better because a real phd cultured them i, I don't i don't know i, I don't think know. the magic rock is the real answer i just i think i i'm so thankful that we have this show and that uh, and people listen to us and um, smash like. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, hey, uh, we're we're affecting some people. We are affecting some people, and and the goal is, I for me now, is to be happy, impacting, or con conversing with the people I'm lucky enough to be able to have conversations with. It's, hey, Richard, if you save just one life, that's uh, one life saved. I I don't no no, I'm from the Thanos school, baby. <laughs> um that, that's right <laughs> the reaper snap um yeah. yeah i'm trying to just get more comfortable with letting letting people do crazy shit it's not i what am i gonna how can i do anything except yeah. keep talking and hope it, it spreads and uh, yeah and if it's a few people that's good enough that's that's what you're saying yeah and, and it's not even good enough that's awesome that's amazing that we've impacted a few people if you've if you've caused someone to pause or think more critically or I mean that's all we're trying to do and we and look at our discord where we've definitely done that so we we should be happy that's an attainable realistic goal but but getting everyone that comes into uh, into the hobby to use their brains is unrealistic you know so the takeaway is uh, try to think a little bit about what you're doing and make sure you have wiggle room and stuff i read a thing about a guy about a person who started to do a water change and dumped their water down the sink and then found out they didn't have enough salt on site Ugh. at their house on site 
they didn't have enough salt there you know, so it's like oh my god yeah, yeah yeah that one and it was like well how do i avoid this in the future it's like this is not a reef keeping issue this is this just is a you this is, issue you know, yeah. yeah 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 right i i you know oh well i throw all my dog food away now i don't have any dog food and i can't that's I, you you did that you didn't buy enough of the thing you need you i tried to drive four hours away and forgot that my gas tank was on e right <laughs> no so i feel bad but it's like yeah the people gotta learn stuff like that too no i'm gonna start that again yeah, i'm gonna start that again benjamin yes this episode is powered by polyp lab and today in the polyp lab corner we have this Oh this, wow! The uh, Polyp Lab Coral View lens, and inside the box is a bunch of stuff. Number one is this clip that goes on your phone. It's got a lens cap too, which is nice. You can take it off. In fact, I recommend you take it off uh, when you go to use it. Otherwise, it looks very dark. It helps. Got a, a little plastic bag in there. Uh, it's got a, a little plastic bag with a lens cleaner, ah. and then it's got the lenses. I love the yellow one. Here they are, the two lenses. And they're stackable and they're protected by these plastic things. And I, I like it. I'm trying to decide with my with my tank. I want to take pictures the same way. And my damn phone camera is just so convenient. Um, I think I, I know how to take good pictures of my tank when I use my DSLR. But I'm working on laying it out so it's the same all the time. And this is one of the ways I do it. Where do you, this is called the Coral View Lens by Polyp Lab. And Check fun fact, all, all the photos that I put on our Reef Beef Facebook page use is, is taken with my phone and using the yellow lens. And there you go. There you go, Polyp Lab, let it power you. No, I'm going to start that again. No, I'm going to start that again. So, so Richard, I have this this interesting thing that we can talk about here there's this the, it better be fucking interesting if this is not interesting <laughs> next time i see you i'm gonna beat you down you're gonna bonk me so but i that say it's interesting crazy. because it's sort of it's sort of complicated or complex but it is it's the money in the hobby me in in you i feel i was thinking about it before the show and you know, the, I, I suppose you could say maybe there's like a, a purist tact and then there's like an elitist tact. And I don't really mean to make either of those sound, you know, sound bad, but I, I, I'm in, I'm in both of those. So <laughs> let me, let me explain what I mean here. So you, you, it, this this hobby is is a pretty is can be expensive it can sort of not be expensive the more you know though but you know what i mean it, even on a good day it's not cheap i mean but cheap is a subjective word i don't know what's cheap for the next person but i think flat out that even in the beginning it's just not the animals aren't cheap the equipment's not cheap you, you, when you don't know anything you're gonna make tons of mistakes even on a basic level, getting into this hobby is like getting, is like adopting a special needs um, bull mastiff. It's just a mess, a hot it's mess. It's just, they, you can't really do it on the cheap. You 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 can save money, but but I, I just like my clever my clever idea. And I changed it to bull mastiff. It was going to be adoption of a person, but we can't. But um, poor dogs, you know, a, a, a special needs. Yeah, bull mastiff with uh, chronic diarrhea. <laughs> um, but what? What? So what do you? Um, I know. I know when I wrote about money, what I was thinking. But you seem. I'm, I want to make sure we're talking about the same thing, or. Or it's a jumping off place for what well, and I this and this can mean several different things, but sort of where I'm going is you know, and I don't I don't mean to turn this into a classist thing or whatever, but some people getting into the industry have plenty of discretionary income. There's lots of us too that don't have any discretionary income. Um for for my part, I I grew up without much money. I don't really want to say poor, but you know, not 
you know, lower middle class, didn't have much. I, I didn't grow up having the type of money that I had any business messing with saltwater tanks. Then how I got into this is because I worked in stores and I right. just couldn't get away from saltwater. So, and you can sort of say to a certain degree, it's why I still do this because I sort of live my hobby through other people's wallets, basically, is what I'm what I'm doing here. But I think too, it's sort of the argument, like, do you have to have a lot of money to have a great reef tank or can you do it on the cheap? That may be. Well, this is what, this is why, this is why I wrote this in our notes. Uh, I wrote, I think what I wrote was aren't awesome tanks that are online and on YouTube, just money. And I think to a huge extent that that's actually true. Mm -hmm. Now we could quibble about what an awesome tank is and what that means. And, and of course there are great budget tanks out there. That's, you know, you know, we don't need to do what about about this. We, we all know that the hobby is not, you know, ubiquitous, that there are different, different things in there. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the tanks that are shown on videos, 90, 95% of them, the common denominator is a bunch of money has been thrown at these tanks, no matter what, you know, you look at, and when you start getting into big tanks, it's even, you know, you remember Ching Chai's tank, yeah. uh, uh, you know, that's a great tank. That's, you know, it was a thousand gallon tank or whatever. Sanjay's, you know, a 500 gallon tank or um, Capolino's tank, 1200 gallon tank. It's like, you know, and then you look at people who have big fish rooms and space, and it's like that's all really just comes down to means. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, of course, I could have the most awesome, cleanest setup in the world if I spent another 10 grand on my system. Uh, and then I could show off how amazingly awesome all of my cables are run and tacked down, and, you know, and how I built an extra room. And I'm, you know, I, I'm I'm interested in that for several reasons. I'm sorry, you you were jumping. No, no, in. no, no. It, you don't have to. It, I, I was just saying the incredible thing too is that you can find pictures and videos of incredible nanos. This might not be your thing, but remember a, a few yeah. couple of years ago, uh, someone had this like floating thing where they attached a magnet to the back of a rock structure or, or uh, epoxy or something in a small nano tank and then like covered it with scolies and acros and stuff like this. So these like artistic aesthetic concepts, it doesn't, a tank doesn't have to be huge and expensive. I've seen True. incredibly beautiful, small things that would have been, but, but so, but that's interesting. So you're, we're talking about money making the thing, but you also can't make the thing without the knowledge, not only just the knowledge, but that you go and do the things on a regular consistency of maintenance and and pushing the tank in that direction. You have to learn how to do the thing. And uh, that takes time and money. Now I'm going to start that again. Now I'm going to start that again. This is Champion Lighting and Supply. And here's the crazy thing. We love Champion. They bring, I use, I'm going to tell the part that I love the most about Champion is because they have a true wholesale side so people like me stores you know maintenance companies all that uh give them a look see because you can open up a wholesale account with them and they probably carry some sort of they do have a lot of sort of esoteric stuff that not everybody is carrying and so you can uh, flesh out the rest of your your dry goods with stuff from champion lighting and supply yeah so check them out no i'm gonna start that again no, i'm gonna start that again so yeah you we you can do a tiny tank inexpensively and it can be wonderful. You could do a big tank on a budget and it could be wonderful. But whenever we talk about those, or whenever you know influencers, I guess, talk about those, they always say, Look at this tank on a budget. That's the point, right? People who put 10,000 gallon tanks in their homes, that's money. I mean, there's no way around it. Oh, and people no, no. love that. So how much are we enjoying money versus how much are we enjoying the hobby? Yeah, I mean, okay. I don't want to. But again, like I told you, I grew up, you know, 
in austere conditions. No, you know, I didn't grow up with a whole lot of money, not getting whatever I wanted and hand me down clothes and lived out in the country and this and that. I try not to do this, but I also sometimes have a chip on my shoulder when someone seems to be doing something just because they're trying to show off their means. That's a little frustrating for me. That's well, that that's frustrating for everybody. Anybody dancing around going, look at how much money I spent. No, but and you oh, know this too. It? Sometimes people, people love that fan fan person out on that stuff. And oh I, yeah. But, but and I see things that are beautiful. But it's like when I just feel like you're just flaunting your, you know, your bank account. It's it takes a it takes a lot of the shine off of it for me. That's sure. maybe just me. That's my chip on my shoulder. And I think that's you know I don't know when you see rappers like making it rain money it's kind of like this is just weird um i i mean great it's just uh, no the weird part is people going yeah that's what i think is weird it's like feeding into it we're just loving the money um my what i was kind of feeling with it was you know we see all these great tanks and people go i want that tank and it's like well that's going to cost you thirty thousand dollars yeah the first year you know and it just is. And I think people, I think, I, I don't know what it is. You know, and again, I can, I can hear right now in Jim, Jim Graham, absolutely budget is great. You can do budget tanks and stuff. I am more interested in the idea that a lot of the tanks we show off as a hobby are just money. Yeah. Money and time, but time is money. Right. So, you know, even even my display, it's like, well, it's 20 years old. Well, what does that really mean? That means I had the means to keep a 400 gallon system going. Uh, you know, to at some point, that's, you know, without the money, I couldn't do this. But it's so super I, weird. And I know it, it, this is goofy because I am attached to you as a friend and as a co host and as a bunch of things. But yeah, <laughs> attached at the hip. But not my hip. But, you know, and it, maybe it's hard for me to articulate, but you can just tell by looking at your stuff and your setup like this. And yes, you've spent, a, you know, a small fortune on your deal, but I don't I'm I'm really saying this impartially, but I don't get that from your whole thing you have going on. This is just I, I from your thing. I just get that you're an incredibly passionate hobbyist. Thank you. And that's totally a thing. Um, you know, uh, uh, so maybe what we're talking about is you can smell a person who is, is, uh, I just dropped 10 grand on these corals. Look how cool it is versus boy, I'm spaghetti worms are really interesting to me. So yeah, I, yeah. Bought, I bought an yeah. expensive lens so I could watch them better. Right. Yeah. Like if we, if someone goes into the minutia or not, or, you know, if, the, if, the, the, another weird thing is like um, another way to talk about this is it's interesting, too. So sometimes your abilities and knowledge can outpace um, what you could create because of money. So in my business, a lot of times like uh, I know this sounds stupid and, and braggy, but it, but it is the truth. Like a lot of times I'm just waiting for a new client that's going to drop some bank because you know, out of the things I create and the pictures that I show, like, I just sort of need someone to drop some bank so I can create this thing. It's not, you know, I don't create these things on my own. I create it with other people's money. And it's like, I, you know, people are like, what can you make? And it's like, what can you spend? I just sounds yeah. crazy, but it's true. I don't know. What am I? I guess I'm worried about people coming into the hobby and this is what they're exposed to. They're exposed to this weird double idea. I don't know if it's really a double standard or not, but it's 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 you should be able to, you know, do this cheap. And this is what you should be able to do. And it's like, but those don't, you know, in in a in a world where lights cost a thousand dollars and pumps are four hundred dollars, you know, and then electricity, you know, I don't even want to think about what I pay for electricity in California to run all this shit. Um, you know, are we doing a disservice to everybody 
by making it seem like the norm is these crazy expensive tanks. I don't know. This is a great analogy, I think. Um, if you're into car racing or fast cars, um, so you could have a Ferrari or a Bugatti, but then if, you know, at one time I used to go to like car races and stuff, but you know, and the, so there would be someone that like gutted a Honda Civic and it would blow the doors off of your Bugatti Veyron, you know, and it's yeah. ugly and funky, but that's the point of it. But together with my analogy is either way, win, lose, or draw. If you want to get into fast cars, it's still expensive to some degree or another. Even that Honda, right? It is not cheap to rebuild a car into a race car. But it's your cheaper version of the Bugatti Veyron that it could sure. blow its doors off, but you still spent an awful. And see, and that's always been my quandary, like working in stores or even me and picking up the phone. Hey, I want an aquarium. And then you're just trying to let people know, I, OK, I don't know what's in your wallet. I don't know how much you're comfortable spending. This is not cheap. Plus, you know, when you're talking to me, it's like plus you're bringing in a professional. So not only. Is this a little expensive, but now you're paying me to do it for you and keep it clean for you. That's just an added layer of expensiveness, you know? So I do get a lot of phone calls where people are like, oh, I didn't realize it was that much. And it's like, you know, but do I want everyone in the world to get into this? It's just not that sort of hobby. It's not that available. Yeah. I guess, I guess I'm just not sure what, you know, I find it interesting that at the same time we're very budget it, it it appears that it's a very budget conscious hobby but it seems like a lot of the tanks that we love are clearly based on money you know yeah, what i mean hasn't. it's like there's no way there's no way around it you know but here's another thing i've seen great tanks where they're they're uh, like mill work around the tank is shit that wasn't the focus it's right sh it's shit with a great tank inside. Now, I think first and foremost, let's be honest. If if you don't, if I don't look into the glass box and it looks great, then I'm not going to say it's a great tank. Like, what if you have one of those cool, like that Kraken cabinet and your right. Neptune is in there. It's all lit up and this. And I look in your tank and it's like a hairball algae mess. Right. That's just money. The, right. Tricking out all of your support equipment. That's just money. And people seem to ogle that shit and it's it's like that's just money it's not to me it, it because i know what goes into it it's 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 not like you went you know in your backyard and you melted down plastic to make the pipe to save money and you, you know it's it's all at the baseline all that stuff you know, I ran inch and a half schedule 80 pipe everywhere and there's 20 valves. It's like, oh, that's just money. It's, you know, and that's great and it's beautiful and it's wonderful. But is, are we, are we, are we, is it just money and, and we're kind of off in the wrong direction a little bit rather than, you know, where are we, are we too excited about the overall picture rather than what's in the tank? Well, but this hobby runs in a bunch of different directions and the hobby yeah. does for people what they want it to do. Um, I know this sounds mean, but in earlier shows I had said before, because I'm part of this industry, so I deal with the people coming in. I say that this is a hobby where there's a good percentage of the people that first enter into it that in the back of my head, I'm thinking you shouldn't be doing this probably. Yeah. You, you, one to two years, you're going to be out because... Like you're telling me you're a, I mean, I've had, I know it sounds bad too, but I had a phone call once where it was a, a, a newly single mom, you know, calling me, asking me about setting up a, a reef tank and, you know, none, none of her personal information was my business, but it's just like, you know, then she gave me her address so I could see about going there and giving her a consultation. And I sort of looked around and I was like, please buy food for your kid. Don't. Please don't do a saltwater aquarium. I didn't say that, but I, I gave her a quote that was very expensive. And she's like, wow. And, you know, so that's how I dealt with it. But it's like, man, I, I, I'm not in charge of people's finances. But if you call me and you're asking me questions, we, there's got to be room in there for what we want to do. And there's got to be room in there for, for paying me to do it for you. If there's not, then why are we wasting each other's time on the phone? 
Yeah. I think I'm not doing a good job of expressing what I think. And maybe beefers or, or anybody listening uh, down in the comments, let us know what you think about what an idiot I am for not being able to express it. Maybe all I'm saying is, I think it's funny that for a hobby that talks about budget so much, that the stuff that we put up on a pedestal is the foundation of it is piles of cash. Yeah. Just because there's no way around it. There's no way around it. And and that's fine. But but maybe I'm a little off too. I'm thinking maybe, you know, when we put all the bells and whistles into your into lighting up and having special effects for your support equipment, you know, that's really cool, but that's really just money. Yeah, but and Richard, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot close to home here. How many of those videos that we have made where we showed the inner guts of what you got going on? And I remember some negative comments in there. Oh, clean that up. Oh, yeah. blah, blah. And I get it too, because I've looked at Richard's stuff and I, but. And been a dick. And this, and this is me saying it, not Richard saying it. But man, if I could and look at the people that made those comments and I could guarantee. So then if I put you in front of Richard's aquarium, none of them have an aquarium that looks anything like if you just look in that glass box. So I sort of feel like don't worry about the messiness or the whatever of how Richard has all the cords and the everything strung out because the focus is what's in that box. Now, if you're a person that has the, you know, a filtration situation where you could so clean, you can eat off of that's awesome too. That, that means more to some people and less to others, but uh, you know, the ultimate goal is what's in that glass box. But you know, so what you're saying is everyone getting so excited about some blown out crazy project. It's like, it's hard not to get excited about that. I mean, so what do you, but here, let's expound on that, Richard, because what are you saying that we shouldn't be excited about that? I don't know. I, I think the dichotomy of, I, I'm, I get, I get confused by half of the hobby scene, the, the people in the hobby seem to be like, you know, I want to save five bucks on this pump. And you know, then look at this million dollar tank and how awesome it is. That's what I really want. It's like, you, the, the, I, I just, uh, I guess, I guess, I guess I just get confused about what, what are we saying we want? What well, are, what are, you know, what are we, what are we showing people that, you know, the, what are people coming into the hobby is it is it our fault by showing expensive hobbies that people get into the hobby and go, oh, fuck, wait, I didn't realize it was this expensive. We do. We talk about how cheap it is to get in the hobby. We talk about how easy it is. Not to do me. The hobby. No, no. But this is the hobby in general. You know, is it's easy now and it's affordable now. And um, dude, this is what pisses me off. I have a massive bone to pick on this because. Yeah, you do. That, yeah, I have a massive bone. That's all that needs to be said. No, the, the, those two things, it's not that hard and it's not that expensive. The people telling you that is the people trying to sell you something. If they're not trying to sell you something, that's never said. Yeah, and I guess we're just bad salespeople is what it comes down to. Or honest? <laughs> yeah, is right. honest salesperson a bad salesperson? Yes. In a capitalistic growth yeah. economy. The the last store that I worked at, I remember I was the number one salesman there. But at the at the same time, I remember um, my boss came to me and told me, why are you trying to... And I still I never figured this one out, what he said oh, to me. Oh, right. He said, why are you trying to make people be you? And I was like, I don't understand what you mean. He's like, you give people all this information. And I was like, what on God's green earth are you talking about? And he was like, you just tell people too many details. And so I was like, I was like, okay, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I'm the number one salesman, so I don't know what your problem is with me. But there was another thing where, where a sales rep to a, a, a company that manufactures chemicals came in and said, hey, how come you're not selling much of this iodine? You got to move that product. And I was like, I tell people how to set up great tanks and they don't involve your giant container of iodine. And he was like, but it's not about that. You might want to go talk to the owner of the store because he just wants you to, and, I'm, and it's like, you know, to both of them, it's like, so you're telling me to just 
that it for in a capitalist way as a salesman i'm just supposed to push everything that they put on the shelf regardless of whether that gets you a good tank or not and i rejected that and that's when i finally left retail because i was like i'm going to do maintenance because i'm just going to make good tanks for people and use whatever the fuck i want to use not what a salesman told me to use or what the owner of the store told me to use well, this is like the problem between a hobby and a business, right? And why so many people who make their hobbies into businesses get so bummed out because a business is not a hobby. <laughs> a yeah. business needs to make money. That's the point, right? And a hobby needs to not make money, which is the point. So, yeah. man, and this is why I don't have a store or why I don't want to sell corals or why I don't want to sell blown glass. It's, it's, I've tried all of that. And it's, it's, I can't do it in a way that makes me feel good. Because you had to be dishonest because, to some degree. Because you need to make the bottom line. Now, let's be honest. The glass thing is just because I just don't want to put things in boxes and ship it. Yeah, right? that would be a and, nightmare. And I got no problem. The glass costs what it costs. The shipping costs what it costs. And the boxing costs what it costs. And, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I would never try to gouge anyone on that. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make my boxing charge a hundred dollars for most things, but you know, I, I definitely need to get something for my time boxing because I don't want to do it. But, but as a hobby, I do whatever I want. Yeah. So and, and to put, I think to put a, to put a cap on this part of the conversation, I think the thing is it, it's great to look at, what some crazy people are out there doing but i would just say i hope what i would hope to see is no one should feel anxiety about not having eighty thousand dollars to spend on a reef tank that shouldn't make you think less about what you are doing and if you've got 80 grand to spell on a spend on a reef tank then go for it and and like the eighty thousand dollar coin that's what things could be but have fun with your hobby on whatever level that you're on. Yeah. And I would say uh, I'm a little worried that we're giving people this impression that this is what you're trying to make. Uh, <clears throat> you know, here's your Ferrari. You want a Ferrari when really, you know, uh, a Chrysler might be fine. Um, yeah. and it's probably what you're going to have. And, <laughs> um, and I, I, and I don't, I don't care. I, I don't, people spend their money on whatever they want to spend their money on, however they want to spend it on. And there are great tanks that cost millions of dollars. And there are great tanks that cost hundreds of dollars. Um, but I think you're right. The hundreds of dollars, great tanks are built on all the money that's gone into that person's education and reef keeping. You know, a vase reef is really great and can be incredibly beautiful, but you got to know how to do it. Eh. So I don't want anybody to give me shit unless it's in comedy about going, Rich doesn't like expensive. Expensive is great, man. If I had more money, boy, everything would be more expensive. It'd be wonderful. Uh, um, and I would hire people to do shit for me. No, I'm going to start that again. No, I'm going to start that again. Hey, Beefers. You're still here. It's, wow. I think that's, especially with the show we just recorded, which, uh, you know, uh, it seemed like it was going to be great, but uh, maybe it is. Maybe maybe the truth is that uh, we're all, all the shows are like that, and Snowman gets a hold of them, and then they're fantastic. Uh, <laughs> but, but uh, hey, thank you for your support. We really appreciate it. If you dig us, you could buy us a coffee, buy us a beer, become a member, join us chatting in the in the Discord in the members area or uh, down below. Uh, but the biggest thing you can do is share the podcast around. That really helps us out the most. Share and like and all that crap. Anything else to add to that pathetic, please like us? Uh, that was it. No, that was not pandering. We really, truly love you. I mean, without people watching this, why in the hell would Richard and I do this? And well, we, the, we it, just doesn't even, it doesn't even matter that we don't understand why you're still here watching this but it is important that you are still here watching this. It's incredible. If you made it this far, you're let's, let's not be, let's be honest here. You're obviously in love with us and that's okay. That's cool. Yeah. And like I dig the, it so much. I've been um, talking to beefers 
um, when I see something going on. The gold member calls were in the middle of scheduling, but like uh, Nicholas was having an issue and we were talking and I was like, let's just talk. You know, we were on the Discord. I was like, this will be easier if we just chat. And I think we ended up Zooming, but sometimes you could just do that on the Discord. So that's what's one of the really cool things about the Discord is, you know, if you're ta- if you're typing with somebody, you can go, can we just get on the voice channel and get this yeah. get this discussed? Yeah. Um, it's really very cool. So thank you for being part of it. We dig it. No, I'm going to start that again. Yeah, I'm going to start that again. Hey, Richard, you yeah. had a thing about uh, Trident calibration fluids okay here's is here's this is a this is a a old-fashioned beef so there's a lot of talk about the trident calibration fluid for the apex right it's how you did it measures alkalinity calcium and magnesium and you calibrate it and then you go about your life right and there's this idea out there that the calibration fluid is not good and that the fauna marin calibration fluid is good I don't see any evidence from anybody anywhere, any compelling evidence that there's anything wrong with the calibration fluid. I think people just don't like it. Um, I talked to Jim Welsh about it, and and you know Jim Welsh does some of the quality control, and Jim is not a slouch when it comes to quality control. Um, in his in his non reefing life, he does stuff like that, and. Um, Hell in the Discord, he he talked about how he he what he does to check a batch, and it's it's a lot. Um, and Jim knows what he's doing. Um, so where does this this idea that this calibration fluid being bad come from, and why? And it's it's <laughs> it comes from, as far as I can tell, from people trying to compare their results with their trident to their you know titration kit can't do it and it's like what are you doing they're they're different of course they're going to be different you know two any two tests are always different so people have gotten themselves into a tizzy plus there's the anti apex contingent out there mm-hmm. that just wants to hate on everything apex which is fine um but i i if anybody has compelling evidence that there's something actually off with the trident solution let me know but, but what i think is happening is people test with their trident and they get some numbers and they test with several other test kits and the numbers don't match up and they freak out and then they go to icp and go well Let's compare it to ICP. And it's like, well, ICP doesn't tr- test alkalinity. So stop. Yeah. You know, test kits are for trending. And, you know, if 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 I were, pe- people care about the numbers matching up. And I think that's crazy. So if I've been using a HANA kit and I'm happy with my tank, right? And that shows me an alkalinity of nine. And my Trident is showing 8.2. I'm not. All I care about is I know is, okay, so they show a different value, right? So when it's, and that's all it does. Trying to get your Trident to show the same value as your HANA is insane. Oh, yeah. And and you're fooling yourself. So just don't do it. If you look at the HANA and it's nine, and you know generally it's 8.2 with the Trident, you're all good to go. You don't care if your trident says nine. Would it would it make sense to now it's tricky because the trident, you know, logs tests and, and logs it, but would it make sense to do if that was bugging you, do your titration, get a get a notebook and or maybe Excel spreadsheet or what whatever apps out there and graph that too and just see if they wander together? You know, the the number's not the same, but are they, you know, are they I, jiving? I, I think that's if you need to convince yourself that I think that's a great way to convince yourself that of about what's actually going on in your tank. And again, you're comparing, you're comparing trends to trends, which is a good thing. Trying to compare absolute values to absolute values is, is, it's just going to make you crazy. And so I, so why do I care? Because the mind story that the trident, 
alkalinity, the, the Trident calibration solution is somehow not good, uh, I think does the hobby a disservice. I mean, that's, that's certainly, I mean. certainly Neptune has, you know, they, you know, and I, Jim help them with that. They have some sort of, they make a batch of this fluid and then they, you know, check its, you know, quality control, I'm sure. And then those packets are hermetically sealed. It, it, it seems as if you, you hermetically seal the packet. It's pretty much good to go for. I, I, I guess my feeling is that I think the, I think this is just anti apex anti Neptune bias. You know, I, 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 unless there's evidence out there again, we keep going to the audience for this though. Again, you know, if, if, if anybody's got some compelling evidence that there's something actually off with the Trident stuff, the Trident calibration, I'd love to see it. I can't find anything just like I, 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 the evidence that, uh, uh, only adjusting your phosphate or nitrate values impacts your algae growth is really few and far between. There's been a couple of outliers, but mm, I don't know what to do with that. So, uh, um, and, and the mind stories really piss me off because I think it hurts everybody. You know, there are things to be mad about for a company, but because you don't like them, so you're going to make their, their fucking calibration solution seem like it doesn't work. It just, Seems when like a Richard, weird place. you know this very much about me. Like I, I dabble with my Neptune apexes that are on my clients, but like almost all these issues that I've had that you've watched me have in real time end up being user error. <laughs> but right. some of the Neptune stuff is frustrating. It's, it's. I think it's. I don't think I would be out of line to say that Neptune stuff isn't sometimes frustrating. Absolutely. When I first got on the Neptune, I was going crazy because there wasn't a good, uh, a decent breakdown of uh, of the coding. You know, a get start on the coding didn't really exist. No one had written one useful yet. And it was frustrating. Um, and there are products that they make that are frustrating that I don't use. Right. So. And, and, and learning an ecosystem is frustrating. And, you know. And it's not as easy as falling off a log. It's you, man, oh man, if I didn't, if you don't know how to reef, you got no business. Uh, I don't even know what to say here. You yeah, have, it's it's a whole nother thing you need to learn. Do you think, I, I believe we talked about this on a show before, but people think you order an Apex Trident, you pull it out of a box and, and put it near your reef tank and it's just boom. And it's just, uh, and with very little input and in steering, it just tells you all the things you want to know. And if that was your ex expectations going into it, first of all, I wouldn't know where you got those expectations, but you would become very frustrating because it's not a vehicle that doesn't, you know, it doesn't steer itself. It requires some input. You got to change the, you know, I see people, all these people make, you know, because the deal where it picks up the, the little tubes and the tube holder, there's a lot of aftermarket things. That don't it. do anything. Really? And it's like, I know they get wonky when it gets close to the end of the calibration fluid. Yeah, but so, okay. So the needles and the, the cones at the top of the, it's oh, it's the cone. It's not the needles. They all come with the needle. But there is a cone that you put on top of your reagent bottle that the idea is that it keeps the needle in the right place so it doesn't suck air or something like that. It's like, that all comes from the same place as as the trident versus your home test kit it's it's trying to get the values to line up to another test kit so Which people bad. people do all these contortions to try to do it and in the end meh right or even worse they do it and it's like oh see it's all better now and it's like it's got nothing to do with what you just did um cuz i've tried all that stuff and gone away from it and it doesn't make a difference. If you get to, you know what? When your readings go wonky towards the end, you know what that means? It means change Agent. your fucking reagents. <laughs> it's, it's not, you know, I, I love, and I could be wrong on this. I love the budget people, but trying to save 35 cents or a dollar by getting 10 extra tests or whatever, it just seems like it's so much work 
just change it. it. The machine is telling you it's coming close to time to change your reagents. You know what? Change your reagents in the scheme of it. You could just you could just just have it as a sign of that's your alarm, your alert. Right. Well, that's what I do. It's like, oh, look, my numbers went goofy. Mm, must be getting this just happened this week. And I went, must be getting close time to change. Well, and, and that's another thing. And that ties into the main thing we were talking about money is I don't feel like I don't feel like a Trident is a budget piece of equipment. Because it's not. No. And then second of all, is what I'm very strong with is you don't need a Trident to have a great reef tank. That's true oh. also. No, absolutely. Absolutely. The automation, and I'm a big fan now of automation. I, I wasn't at first. I, I really didn't trust it. Took me a while. I freaking love it now, but I'm a crazy person. Um, and my system is crazy. And and at the same time, it's not. But it, it's the system is very specifically designed to do two things. One, let me control spawning, right? And two, to allow me to go away for three weeks and have nothing bad happen. That's why my system is complicated like it is, but it's also simple like it is. It's complex, not complicated. Um, but you certainly don't have to do it this way. This, you know, this is, and, and let's be real, this is, you know, 20 years in the hobby and me dicking around with it. It's like, so my apex octopus spreading, you know, that's been going on since 2015. It's not like I went boom, you know, and give me everything. It was this very slow build up of, okay, so the apex really works. It really does turn off my metal halides when it gets too hot. And that's really wonderful. And that put one pump on it and put this other thing on it. And then it's like, okay, over the years, and I, I'd like to know what the temperature is over here as well. And I'd like to dose this over here. And I like, and and now it's this sprawling ridiculousness, but it, but it's, but it works. For and all I, those little facets. That's the key, though. Is I, I want the listener, or the viewer, to all those little things. Richard wants to know the temperature over here. Was it? Sometimes those things go awry. It doesn't mean that the whole thing's bullshit. It's just it requires some you know, checking things out. Maybe a temp probe came out or maybe something weird's going on, but it, it caused you to go over there and check it out. You know, right. these, you don't just pull this stuff out of a box and it just runs your life. Right here. We're now, not there. We're not there yet. I want to, I'm going to share my screen with you real quick. Yeah, go for it. Because I think this will be a little interesting and we'll show what I'm talking about, about how you have to know how it works you can't just use it right okay are you seeing my apex screen now i am okay i could show you all kinds of things what am i going to show you here just this part here <clears throat> these four things in this corner here on the left all right those are all the salinity probes i have right now on my system really right the display tank salinity is coming in at 33.1. The display tank alternative salinity is coming in at 14.2. The breeding tank specific gravity is coming in at 30 uh, uh, salinity. It's coming in 33.5. The frag tank salinity is coming in at 53.8. <clears throat> right? So should I freak out? No. Because I know what each of these is doing and why it's stupid. And why do I have four salinities on my tank in the first place? That's a dumb idea, right? No. Right? I, now, now it's like, which one is right? I could totally get caught up in chasing these numbers. Well, just out of interest, can you tell me why would the one be 14.2? Because it's a, a shitty probe. <laughs> there you go. I mean, that's, 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 that's really it. Can't I compare these? I thought I oh compare here. Uh, okay, so the one that's fourteen point two is DT alt. Yeah. Okay, DT alt is all over the place. So I ignore this probe. This is a probe I put on to see if the probe was still good. Okay. It, it's clearly not. It's reading a bad range, and it's uh, as you can see from the graph here, 
it's all over the place. And right? you even calibrated it at one point? Between 50 and zero. I half calibrated it. The mm -hmm. next thing to do is to calibrate it for real. Okay, okay. so we get rid of that one. Then we want to compare it to um, frag tank salinity. Okay, so that's the one that's reading 54, right? Now you can see in the trend, the trend is pretty stable. There's this drop that happens. Are those, second. is that ATO maybe? Probably not in that tank. Okay. Um, I don't know what that is, but there's something regularly happening huh. at four o'clock, 1.45 a.m. No, it, there's no, I don't know what that is, but if you look at the general trend, yeah, pretty even. So I don't actually, it's it's gone up a little bit, right? So yeah. here it was 52, now it's 54. I don't know if that's an artifact of of the calibration issue, but but generally we're stable, right? So I don't care about that one so much. But now that I see the trend is going up, I'm going to check that because maybe something with the water exchange is not going right. Yeah. Now the last one to look at was the BT tank, right? Yeah. there whoa right so it was down here like this at zero because it was out of the water for a while i just noticed uh, that. that'll do right? it well when i went i went hey one of those is off so i look at those four numbers uh, we'll get back to that but here i put it back in the water the trend is pretty straightforward right yeah it's pretty much right on line with the other one so those two trends are great so i'm pretty happy that two of those probes are kind of giving me this three of them are really kind of giving me the same pr trend right so what do i think about when i look at this i go up oh, yep those are where all those values kind of are supposed to be i don't have i don't really have to do anything i might go and chase this dt uh, uh the the alternative one but probably not i'm probably going to chase the frag tank one because this is saying to me that there's probably something going on with the probe but but it's stable and the other two the two that i trust that get along right look at the numbers right they're even matching in numbers yeah. 33 and 33.5 yeah and then i go look at my refractometer we can get out of the screen right i go look at my refractometer and and then that's when you that sort of tell me, in fact i think i should probably go do that real quick I can't. And that's, but the, using the refractometer, you know, carefully calibrating it beforehand, that sort of gives you your sort of food for thought to, to even more so, you know, because I, I, I know you, I'm not a giant fan of Neptune conductivity probes. They, they yeah. gave me nightmares. So as a matter of fact, I don't even run them on my client tanks yeah. that, that have the apex just for me. As a non-hobbyist in that aspect, it's just giving me data that's going to cause me to freak out. So, so I, when I'm there at these clients once a week or every other week, I'm just Johnny on the spot with what you see Richard has right there, which is a VGSTX3 refractometer. So the refractometer is giving me around 30, about 35, which is what I would have expected. So what does this tell me? This tells me that my salinity is probably around 33 to 35. I'm fine with that, right? I don't need to go crazy and make this work and make them all, all match. Yeah. I am, my super power that I've developed over time is to revel in ambiguity uh in this particular kind of ambiguity and not freak out about it and it's it's about what i want it to be instead of what's my number and so you know eventually i'll get around to checking those ones that aren't working right um but it generally i'm just looking at the entire system and trying to find the trends to be happy rather than at the absolute number well and then i think the oh, final oh. test oh go ahead oh i'm sorry the important the other important thing is i've spent a lot of time with these salinity probes i want to get back to what you were saying the only reason i'm comfortable with them and this is why everybody needs to get their own test kits and work through all the test kits you have to become comfortable with the process if you're not comfortable with the process you're freaking out all the time so yeah get a couple of test kits and mess with them and learn for yourself 
how the trends work. You're not going to believe me. You have to feel it viscerally for yourself. And if you're not going to put the time in to understand the salinity probe and try to, why is it off and how do I get it to work? And now I put the money to put two of them on so I can check them against each other and the time to really see if they're working correctly uh, or giving you a trend that you can understand, that takes time and only an idiot might do it. So when I say I, you know, I trust this, this is hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of work over years with salinity. I mean, you know what I was doing with salinity a few years ago? Yeah. It was driving me crazy. And I bought every tester possible and tracked them for a while and eventually went, this is stupid. None of them are great. They're yeah, all Chris just helped you figure that one out, didn't he? They're all everyone did. Uh, they're all just fine. So stop trying to find one that works. And so my education has told me that stop trying to compare shit. And you'll make yourself crazy. I understand, though, but people have to compare shit and make themselves crazy. That's that's the way everybody learns. Yeah, but isn't that funny? Because you can be told that. But if you've never walked down that hallway, you could be told that over and over again. And then you go down that hallway and then you're like, oh, my stuff doesn't compare. It's like we told you this before you walked into the hallway. Yeah. And now you become another one of the people. Just understand that before you open that door. Right. So I want to <laughs> recap yeah. this episode. And I want to say, please be careful when you use things like flatworm exit or any sort of thing like that. And think about what's going to occur over the next couple of days. Um, enjoy the finer things in life, but please don't get anxiety because you're not rich and wonderful and powerful. You know, enjoy what you have and what you're doing. And um, yes. quit thinking that all your test kits need to say the same thing because that's just not reality. Publius! Publius! Ah! This show has been brought to you by saltwateraquarium.com, Champion Lighting and Supply, and powered by Polyp Lab. And of course, powered by Beefers. Thank you so much for all your support. And uh, this is Reef Beef saying... Make sure your pants are facing full. Yeah. When you go out in public, always be sure that your pants are facing forward. You know, oh, but, 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 you know, uh, now I'm going to start that again. The more, you know, ah, who cares? I'm talking. No, much. I get it. Talking too much. This is the Reef Beef podcast. And the point of this podcast is to get at attitudes and information uh, that you get at the bar at a trade show after the show floor is closed. Everyone is loose and everyone is talking what they really think. That's what we're getting at at Reef Beef. So welcome to the show. You know, I was trying to think of something to say to end um and end the end the end the show today. And uh I don't have anything. Really?